What's up, everybody? It's your favorite frenemies, favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the movie masterpiece Starscream. And the reason why I say frenemies is because this was in the box sent to me by Paul C. of stuff to look at, and this dude must really hate me. I kid, I joke, but good grief. <laughs> I got a lot to say about this already. The only other thing I had to talk about in regards to intro, I'm recording this like uh, in and out of between breaks and my wife taking a shower and stuff, whatever. On Mother's Day, uh, I'm painting her closet, so forgive my, my hands. I got stuff going on. I never stop, bro. With that being said, we're going to take a look at this guy, but in order to do so, we need to start with accessories. So he comes with this, this like uh, spinning barrel Gatling gun looking type of uh, unit. And this is one of the few guns that actually does look good on him in jet mode. Uh, no paint whatsoever, and the barrel spins. And decent enough skull work, to be fair. That'll plug into the bottom of the jet mode underneath the canopy. It can also be stored in uh, robot mode on the back of his backpack. <laughs> it comes with this too uh, we actually do have a little spot of paint here it's like a little airbrush paint blast right there in the center and uh, this stuff I think is more for the robot mode but um, yeah well, there's wires and stuff like there's some good sculpted detail in this but not a lick of paint that will plug in underneath the wing tuck that hand around tuck the thumbs back make sure that you got this all properly lined up tab the weapon into the palm or the open hand and then into the forearm and then you get whatever this is um once again decent enough sculpted detail uh this is a softer plastic so you shouldn't have to deal with any breakage um i don't know dude what else is there really to say and that will plug in underneath the other wing and then you can have him just look uber ridiculous to utilize the weapon in robot mode, you have to bend the arms back like this so that you have this tab and that tab visible. And then you can take your weapon and plug it in to the wrist and then simultaneously into the forearm and that will keep it secure. And then what you're left with is just the jet mode. It does have landing gear underneath and it can fold up. And it has some paint, I, have, I guess, this camo look. It's not a very good job of doing the camo look, honestly. But the kind of plain panel stuff that's painted does look good. Like the gold, this uh, like blue grayish color here, the grays, uh, the translucent canopy, or should I say can of peas, looks good. You know, like all of the purposeful stuff looks paint um, that's painted looks good. It's more so the problem comes in with the the kind of deco like army camo look that they tried to do, and it's just they just don't. I don't. I don't think they know what they're doing. Honestly, they just gave it a shot and was like, I don't know, make it look like a a, a water hazard in a golf course, and called it a day. Um, and then you have this, like, look, here's the thing, right? Like, masterpiece should mean something, in my opinion. And this is just not a good job um, of hiding this. Now, um, obviously, it's a jet. Obviously, jet stuff has to be hidden somewhere. It has to be tucked in somewhere. And it's kind of a streamlined jet, so it's going to be hard to do it. But I think it could have been done better than this. I think we've seen it done better than this. Um... But yeah, I mean, from the top or whatever, it looks fine. And actually, it, no, it doesn't, dude. Like, look at all this stuff here. Like, like even the silhouette is is sacrificed. Like, I just don't think it's well done. I'll be honest with you. I don't. Um, the materials of it feel good. The solidity of it feels good. And the paint deco that's not the camo looks good. But the rest of it just doesn't work. Certainly doesn't work as well as Tiger Tracks. And he's sitting next to him. All right, so let's get them transformed. And the first step is to get this piece up and off. So in order to do that, you got to undo these tabs here. Good grief. And these wings plug into the bottom of those pieces. That's what was like uh, giving my weapon a hard time. You can pull the wings out to the side. And make sure that these pieces are nice and free on the sides. And then lift this entire section up. All right, so unattach or detach as opposed to unattach because I'm a doof. The legs from the body of it. And then you got to get the arm out 
this will swing up and over and you can start working on the arm so uh yeah i mean it's just a bunch of pieces and it's hard to make sense of it just try, try to start straightening it all out this piece will collapse on a double hinge here and then you can flip the hand out and get the fingers oriented and then this piece comes down spins around and sits back up against it and uh, we'll start there and do the same for the other side up over swing straighten the arm out let's get all this out of the way tuck this up and in flip out the hand flip out the fingers rotate at the forearm this piece comes down spins around and sits back up against the main bulk of the body for the legs break the connection swing them to the front the thigh extends and comes down the foot come up there's actually this whole piece that swings out flip out these pieces here and then there this will tab back into the bottom of the foot you can sit that in and then swivel it around so same on this side extend the thigh disconnect the foot open up these pieces here bring out this entire section. I don't know if you can see all that. And then swing the foot down towards it so that that tab goes into the die cast piece. And then you can swing the whole leg around. Now we gotta get them connected, right? So we're gonna bring this up and these tab in there and then open up the pelvis and i haven't done a great job of tapping that in Have I... let me get this real quick i got it tapped in now now make sure your landing gear is up or out rather flip your canopy or should i say can of peas down open that up bring his head out and the neck piece is on like a double hinge flip these pieces out to the side close that bring that down and oh, you're supposed to rotate these two. All right, so we're gonna tuck this piece up and underneath and bring your arm around. And there's a little piece that we have to flip out. Where is it? It's hard to keep track of all this little sh stuff. All right, flip this piece out here. This comes around and slides in to this cavity. And then it's just a matter of orienting the arm, right? Yeah. And that's one side. Oh, th and then this piece has to come around here and clip on to that. Okay. All right, so that makes sense. Let's do it on here. This should be a little bit easier. So this swinging armature here has to tab in to there and this little T block has to slide into that little chest cavity there And then 
your armature swings down, tabs into there, orient the arm. Oh, stupid. Clean up your shoulder and resecure everything. If we're not out of the woods yet. Bring this down. These up. Your thrusters go to the sides here. Your wings here come up on this gray armature. And then, well, you probably can't see what I'm doing here. But flip this in and flip those two out. And once you get them up here, you kind of want them like off at an angle, I think. Something like that. Maybe down like this. Same on the other side. We're going to flip these two pieces out. We're going to flip this piece in. Rotate the armature up. And I think something like that. And then bring the backpack up. This tab here has a corresponding female end on the backpack. And you can flip this piece down. You can flip these pieces up and grab on to the sides of the backpack. And I th think that's it. I'll clean them up, we'll take a look at them. Holy Mary, mother of pearl. I don't know <laughs> what to say about this. Ugh. All right, let's take a look. So we have some paint on them, some gold paint. The eyes, I can't really tell if they're painted or translucent. The jaw or mendable moves up and down. There's a hinge, obviously. The hinge exposes a neck joint that's all detailed, so that's nice. There's a swivel as well. Gold paint. I can't, dude, with this. Let's just straighten his legs out so that he can actually stand because the joints are a mess. Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, oh, God. So part of this is just the design of the character, right? But then part of it is just that, like... It's not well built. Like, these ankles are weak. Some of the ratchets in the knees are weak. Okay, let's continue. Obviously, no waist swivel because of the pile of parts. We also have tons of different um, paint in here. We have silvers. We have gold. Silver and gold. And we even have some airbrushing here along the chest plates, which does look nice. Uh, the same kind of goes for the chest details here or the lats. Dude, this dude has never missed lat day in his life. Um, the shoulders are universals uh, on a soft ratchet. Get you out to 90 degrees. The metal here is die cast, obviously, but it is also painted. At least I think it's metal. And soft ratchets around. There's no bicep swivel. You get a forearm swivel. They're not the same thing uh, for those keeping track. And then you get the elbow at 90 degrees. A forearm swivel basically acts as a wrist swivel. So it doesn't accomplish the same goal. It doesn't get the arm across the body. So here you'll have to use, it just, it doesn't, you see what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's a limitation. So the same thing goes for the uh, the forearm here. Some nice paint along with the details that are painted inside of the forearm. Wrist swivel and hinge in out. The thumbs, I guess, are on a hinge out to the side and then back and forth. So basically a universal joint. And then you get an additional wrist hinge in and out on the, um, the middle of the hand, which is actually kind of nice. And then you have a knuckle joint for your first knuckle, and these are that same soft plastic here, so they shouldn't break on you for your phalanges. Same for the other side. And then we have the legs, which is, to me is the, the biggest issue with this. So, uh, once again, with some nice silver paint on the pelvis, nice airbrushing paint on the thighs. Universals for hips, ratcheted, get you out, no problem. Pretty much the full band dam. <laughs> Dude, look at that pose. Um, 
ratchet it out to the side for pretty much the full Monty. So no issues there. We get a thigh swivel that's actually pretty well done. And then we have the chicken legs, right? So my knee joint here, so that's what it was. It wasn't tabbed in properly. So you have ratcheted knee joints and your second knee joint with an additional swivel that'll act basically as an angle swivel, which is fine. Um, yeah, that's much better. However, uh, the ankles are still an issue. You have to have him in his chicken leg, and even that doesn't work great. I mean, I like, I would imagine that that has to tab in up there, but okay, well, no, but it's loose on mine. And then even when it is tabbed in, it's loose. That's tabbed in, but it's still loosey. Okay, that's better. It is better. It's just a... Uh, all right. Not the best. It will give you an ankle tilt up and down, though. Basically, right, so it's, it's this piece that tabs in inside of the leg. But then it's this additional hinge here that ends up being a problem. But this will tab into the back of it. So if you have it all sorted, you should be fine. And it gives you an ankle rocker. The problem is to use any of the articulation of it, it has to kind of unsort itself. And once it's done that, you start losing stability of the bot. And there's all of these like sheets, like for all of the detail that's in this thing, in the, in the paint that they did throw at it, there's entire sheets of plastic here that should be painted because of the detail in them. And they're not. And there it is from the back, which is also kind of a nightmare. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. Uh, I think Masterpiece is a bit of a stretch here. But they're calling anything a Masterpiece these days, so I get it. Size comparison wise, there it is next to a uh, Takara, or I mean a Masterpiece Seeker uh, G1 style. So, I mean, it's big. I guess that, that matters. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives and one of them is the solidity of the build. Like the joints have to be plugged in in a certain way which sacrifices the articulation and then when you try to use the articulation you end up sacrificing the stability of the build. On top of that, a lot of things don't stay plugged in properly anyway. My T-notches have a tendency to keep popping out. Stuff has a tendency to keep coming untabbed. It's not a very user-friendly experience. In fact, it's quite frustrating and aggravating. On top of it, it looks ugly. <laughs> That's subjective, of course. You also, for all of its moving pieces and bots and bits and nuts and bolts all over the place, you don't get a waist swivel and you don't get a bicep swivel. For as many moving pieces as this thing has, the parts that should move when you have it in robot mood are, mode are absolutely absent. And it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Who okayed this design? Stevie Wonder. Matt Murdock. Ray Charles. Good grief. Positives wise, I like the use of paint. There's a lot of airbrush paint. There's silvers and golds, obviously, that we've already sung along with. Tons of sculpted detail throughout. Uh, a lot of the articulation is there. You know, not enough for it to be called a masterpiece, in my opinion, but a lot of it is there. Transformation's a mess because the figure's a mess, but it's also kind of relatively intuitive in a way, and it's ugly. <laughs> The accessories integrate easily. The materials are fair. A lot of soft ratchets instead of hard ratchets, but it still holds the positions for the most part. Yeah, not too bad. I'll be honest with you. If I didn't think so much of Paul and his family, specifically his daughter, who I have a soft spot for, I would have my way with this thing. I've never been so aggravated by just like the, the playability and user friendliness of an action figure in a very long time. I want to hurt this bad, but I'm, 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 40. I'm trying to be a better man. I'm working on me. So I'm going to show a little bit of self-control and let this thing live. I pardon it. Good grief. God bless you if you're a fan. It's a big no from me, dog. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.